Hi, good evening, everybody. As already told uh, by people, I am Group Captain Munish Sharma, and we would be taking you on a journey for uh, your investment planning, whether it is by way of uh, investing through mutual funds or share market or uh, real estate or risk management uh, as insurance goes on. The topic which we have chosen, it's primarily for the people who are planning retirement or who are retiring or who have just retired, but they have some kind of a corpus available and they're wondering where to go, what to do, how to invest. I think we'll cover <clears throat> all that. The idea is to guide uh, the people here who can uh, be benefited uh, by the talk or by associating with us to generate an income for their life. With this, uh, I will initiate uh, my talk and let me tell you that I am, everybody knows about uh, this gentleman known as Warren Buffett. I'm uh, quite influenced with uh, this guy. So you may find uh, during my talk, uh, you know, some references to Warren Buffett. It is uh, actually intentional, right? So what he says is successful investing takes time, discipline and patience no matter how great the talent or effort be some things just take time and he goes on to say you can't produce a baby in one month even if you get nine women pregnant so the crux of the matter is that uh, you know when we are on this journey i mean i am not going to give you a quick fix solution wherein you hear something and go to the market tomorrow and you find you find that a lot of earnings waiting for you know it not going to happen that way there's a message there's a path there is a procedure which we would be discussing which can eventually lead you to good gains over a period of time with this let me tell you our coverage today would be before i mean the we'll start with understanding the retirement needs why do we you know need to plan assessing our current financial situations and setting goals creating a retirement plan or investment strategies, the methodology of investment. We'll also look at the factors which influence the income level, more about it a little later. Diversification and risk management, as I, I, I said initially, uh, the, some basic safeguards. I mean, we'll not get into details of, uh, no details of the safeguards, but here some basic will tell you. And there's some common mistakes which we all make and eventually will end by giving some practical tips well to start with the planning we all know there are two types of income i won't i mean the basic definitions i won't spend much time one is an active income we all know what is an active income when you're working nine to five nine to seven eight to two whatever be the timeline when you're working for somebody i mean somebody means even if you're doing a business you're you're actively involved in that that is an active income and the second is a passive income wherein you spend little time or uh, you know, small, small time zones in different work and then you uh, start earning from there. That's a passive income. So when we talk about retirement planning or income after retirement, what we are essentially saying is that you know, the active income is not there. Okay. So it is not necessarily applicable for those who are retiring from active service, even somebody who wants to shut down his business and think other ways okay you know enough is enough so let me only focus on passive income it's a good advice for him also what is uh, the basic i mean when you prepare uh, before investing money its basic concept is you have a job and then you retire when you retire what you do is you collect all the funds retirement benefits in terms of the uh, defense forces people you get gratuity, you get commutation, you have your provident fund, some insurance balance, etc., etc. Then you estimate what is your going to be your monthly expenditure, what is going to be your you know, milestone expenditures. You need to quantify what is your required returns, how much do you really want to earn, and then accordingly, you know, you need to invest. That is, when you are transitioning to retirement, this is the first, very first and very important milestone. Why I say important? Because, I mean, it said a goal without a plan is just a wish. I mean, if you do not have a proper plan, if you do not understand your requirements, if you do not understand how you are going to generate the money, it's just a wish. You may want to have uh, 
10 crores, 10 years down the line. But if you do not have a plan, you may actually not reach that the target. So that is what is retirement planning all about. That if you have to keep it on track, please plan. And when you have to plan, you have to ask certain questions to yourself. What are those questions? Age-related questions. First thing is, how much am I going to survive? What is the age expectancy? Whether do I think that I will live 99 years, 95 years, 80 years, 60 years or whatever? When am I starting? That is also age-related question. If I'm starting at 20 for an age of 80, maybe my planning can be very you know, simple. By spending or by you know investing maybe a couple of thousand rupees, I can reach the target, whatever I want to. But if my planning starts in 50s and then I am looking for age of 80, 85, so for those 35, 40 years, my approach may be different. So you have to ask those age-related questions. Then asset-related questions could be, how much do you already own? I mean, as of today, if you're planning, what do you already have? You have a house, you have a maybe commercial uh, property, you already have some investments, you've got a lot of jewelry, etc., etc., some agricultural land, some investment somewhere. How much do you owe? That is also important. You've taken some loan, you've taken, you uh, get a house constructed, you take a loan, you buy a vehicle, you take a loan, you send uh, children for education abroad, you take a loan. So all that has to be accounted for. That how much, what is my, you know, in accounting term, we call it as a, you know, balancing the balance sheet, the credits and debit side, liabilities and assets have to match. Then comes the expenditure related questions. Okay, uh, how much do you think on a monthly basis you would need? What would be your the inflation? Okay, because it is not that uh, you are going to, when you come out of service, your living standard has to remain same. That is the least. If it, if it cannot go up, but if your living standard has to go down, that means there is somewhere, you know, the planning has gone wrong. Contingencies, cash flows and medical need. How much have you planned for contingencies? What all you already have to cater for contingencies? How do you look for uh, planning for contingencies? Contingency is not necessarily medical contingency. There may be something in the family, some commitment, some travel. You know, there could be any kind of a contingency. How much is your cash flow requirement on a month to month basis? You know, all this has to be catered for if the plan for or answered to at the time of when you're planning for your retirement or you, you're planning for your investment post retirement. When you have a clear answer to all these, that is the time the next question comes that to achieve all this, how much should I invest? Most of the time people do not follow this. They think whatever they're investing is sufficient. It may be for all you know, but it may not be. And my experience tells me for last 30 years I have been in this field that majority of the time people are falling short of what they actually needed. In fact, just about uh, three, four days back, I was talking to somebody, a retired uh, Air Force officer, and uh, he is uh, he said that I wanted to buy a house 10 years back at so-and-so location. It was costing, uh, that time it was costing uh, about 3 CR. I had around 2 CR, but I could not buy it because I didn't have money. And today it is costing 6 CR and I have 4.5 CR. So what I'm saying is that uh, you know this is where if he had planned these 3, 4 steps earlier, probably he wouldn't have been saying that way. Uh, the approach to retirement planning, I mean, they could be better, but I find this is the best approach because this is what uh, I have followed. This is what I have uh, advised people to follow. and. Uh, I have seen results of the people who have followed that if you start early, it is always better because your pressure is pressure on you is very low. Okay. If I have to talk about me, I started in 1990. Okay. I got commissioned in 1988 and I started in 1990. Automate saving. That is the latest concept. I mean, latest in this, it wasn't there during our time, certainly. But then today you have you know, uh, it makes a lot of sense to automate your saving activity or investment activity because, you know, whenever it is manual, there are chances of slippages, there are chances of missing out dates, there are chances of uh, 
feeling that there's something else is on priority, etc. Okay. So if when somebody starts early, automate saving, he gets an advantage of compounding, which uh, my best philosopher and guide said that it is an eighth wonder of the world. We'll come to it a little later. There has to be an optimum mix. I mean, I uh, do suggest for people who are not taking expert guidance, for them, there's a requirement of optimum mix. Those who do follow expert guidance, the optimum mix definition changes to an extent. But still, as it said, that don't put all the eggs in one basket, that rule applies here also. One needs to draw a proper plan as to, I mean, the entire journey has to be worked out, even after, uh, whenever you're starting, from that day onwards till whatever in you know, normal expectancy your life would be, and whatever your commitments would be, everything has to be catered for, and the entire plan needs to be worked out. It needs to be regularly reviewed. It's not that you go to a professional or you do it yourself. You do it once, work it out. You find, OK, you've got, say, 1 and 1.5 CR. And if you invest it here, 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 your requirements will be met. You make a plan, put it in the file, keep it in the cupboard, and forget about it. We have already done the investment. No. It needs to be reviewed. How frequently? That the professional will tell because it will change from time to time. In certain scenarios, maybe a monthly review may be required for certain types of assets. Another type of assets in a different type of scenario, maybe quarterly, six monthly, annual reviews may be required. And also plan for the risk, whether it is health risk, whether it is the risk for life or anything else. Uh, you know, people do take loan, even that is a risk. Okay. Now, to be, I will just tell you, I mean, it's this is uh, you know, over a period of experience, and there are a lot of people who also suggest that to be comfortably retired at 60, 60, we have taken a ballpark figure because majority of the government service people retire at 60. If you're planning to start your planning, retirement planning journey in 20s, around 15 to 20% of annual income investment would actually sail you through to your goals. 80-20 of equity and fixed income ratio can be maintained. Not sacrosanct, and it varies from individual's risk appetites and also his financial needs. If somebody is in 30s, 25 to 30 percent, one will need to invest to achieve what the uh, somebody in 20s will achieve, with 70-30 ratio in equity and uh, you know, fixed income. As you grow old, the it is advised to reduce your exposure to the fixed income, to equity, and maintain a parallel or a comparable ratio in fixed income, which gives you kind of a stability which is required as a regular income. OK, so in 50s, around 50-50 ratio of uh, 45 to 50 percent of your income should suffice, would suffice, rather. OK. Remember, there are three priorities of any, in fact, this is for anybody, but since we are addressing an audience of retired or retiring people, so the three main priorities. Why they are th for more important for retiring people? Because the income uh, per se, which is like an active income or a salary income, stops. So if I have got a regular active income, salary income, my risk taking appetite may be a little more because even if I lose out somewhere, I will still have something to come up on a month-to-month -month basis. And I can, again, you know, build up a corpus. So income generation, of course, is a priority. Corpus protection is also equally important because wherever I invest, I should not, my amount, whatever I have invested should remain safe. It shouldn't happen that that also vanishes. And of course, it should grow. I mean, it's safe, grow, and also gives me a regular income. When we talk about uh, the retired people, uh, portfolio management, post-retirement portfolio management, if there's a small retirement corpus, it will again vary. It will again change from individual to individual. Because small, medium, large is, I mean, there's no definition per se. But something which is, I would put it in this manner, that if uh, the requirement is to, say, generate uh, 1 lakh rupees uh, per month as an income, and your corpus is just about sufficient to generate that income. So then it is, you know, is a small corpus, I would put it. So the 100% of it goes into only income generation. Okay. How it can go into corpus protection and corpus growth will happen eventually when your income generation, you start saving from there and then 
we add on to the growth and the protection as well. Similarly, anything surplus, if you have anything more bigger corpus which can generate more income, more than what you need, so only 75% or the amount equal to what you need for monthly income uh, generation goes there and balance goes for corpus protection. And if it is even more, then it is 50, 40, and 10 for income generation, corpus protection, and corpus growth. Uh, we must look at it, what is the right asset class? We have seen we should do investment. We have also seen that how, what are our priorities and how we should uh, you know, manage with reference to income generation, with reference to protection, or in, with reference to growth. So when we talk about right, choosing the right asset class, this is just a data from uh, April 86 to March 24. April 86, I picked up because that was the time when uh, you know, I actually got involved into you know, dealing in this market. Or in fact, rather, I, start, I got involved into learning uh, the concept how to deal in the market. So there is a historical data. As per RBI, uh, the inflation has grown on an average of 6.5% from then on. The gold has a growth about 8.63%, close to around 9%. Silver is around 8%. The bank deposits have grown around 8%. The company deposits have also grown about 9%. And uh, the Sensex has grown about 15% or so. Uh, so if you actually see, this is the actual gain. Okay, But if you adjust the inflation here, so you will find that gold has given you only 2%, silver is 1.5%, bank deposits are close to 2%, company deposits close to 3%, and the Sensex is around 8% after adjusting for the inflation. Remember this slide, I will also tell you something interesting a little later. So if you actually see the equity market has outperformed all other investment class for the period which I am talking about, 86 to 24. It has outperformed other investment class always, but they are different periods, they are time, different time zones. I'll show you and you'll find something very interesting coming up. So when we talk about the right asset class, so if, you, if somebody has invested around 1,000 rupees in different asset class in April 1986, it would have got inflated to 12,710 today. And uh, of course, the figures here, the Sensex figures are uh, actually May figures. So it is not 7,50,000. It will be some 8 lakh. Uh, 3,000 or something, which is the latest, uh, I think 80,300 something was the census, right? So, yeah, 80,500, okay. So, the census returns from, census was formed in 1979 with a base of 100. Of course, it was formed in 81, but the base was taken as 100 on in 1979. And as on yesterday's close, it was 80,519. My prediction was that by 31st December, it will touch 80,000, which is already done. We still have about five odd months to go. So uh, it has grown. Uh, I mean, if somebody has invested around 1 lakh rupees in 1979, it would have been around 8 CR today. Somebody who's invested 1 lakh rupees in 1979, you would have earned by around 8 CR at the rate of very close to 16% CAGR. Okay, that's very amazing. Like, you know, almost 44, 45 years, constantly 16% CAGR is, uh, let me tell you, it's amazing returns. Okay, this slide is, uh, I always show it for the simple reason because this was somewhere in January 2004 when a lot of people who came to me and said, boss, what you're saying is wrong. We, the Sensex has reached its peak, 6,000, it had touched on 2nd of January 2004, and this is the news on 3rd of January. So I found this cutting and I find it interesting to quote. And I told them, I said, yes, fluctuations may happen, but this is the only place where you can actually invest and get your money increased, get your income enhanced. Market went down, went up, and kept on going. But somebody who had actually you know, exited the market at 6,000 and had not come back, Imagine what he would have missed out around 13.8 percent or close to 14 percent CAGR from then on. Even if somebody had invested in gold, taken out the money from market and invested in gold, which was at 6065, 
he would have got it around 10% CAGR and silver around 8.3% CAGR. There's also, you know, when we talk about gold, when we talk about silver, there's also an in, you know, asset class called investment in real estate. Of course, Captain Whipple would be covering that up in details. But uh, just to touch it up, uh, I always say that, yes, you somebody wants, when I said fixed income and uh, you know, the share uh, market or equity market, if you follow that, you will generally find uh, on an average, uh, the commercial rentals is around 7 to 9% and around 10% principal appreciation year on year, depending on location, project sectors, etc. There are a lot of you know, permutation combinations here. So just to lead you to my next slide, which will tell you that how simple it could be you know, to go with the investments in mutual funds or you know the share market. I generally show this slide, but it is a good way of having regular income, certainly over a longer period of time. So what you have to be careful about when we talk about all these, like we talk about uh, billions, that is gold, silver, real estate, or the share market, I've told you, sensex growth, etc. But what you have to remember is you, whatever, whatever you do, you have to do is that follow this mantra is sochkar, samajkar, niveshkar. So with this, I come to the, the crux of it, which I always advocate and say, I mean, it is being said all over the industry, the mutual funds say here, because they give you wealth creation, they provide you regular income and corpus growth. That is very important. Even if you have wealth created, but if it is not safe, then what happens? You will always be you know, wondering whether my you know what it may show growing but if it is not safe you will find that someday all that growth will just wipe off while will vanish now investing in mutual funds uh, why i showed that real estate slide is the advantage here in investing in mutual fund is you have a flexible investment tenure it's convenient and hassle free i mean minimal paperwork hardly any paperwork i mean in fact you ask me today is zero paperwork I, I will change my slide accordingly because to open a mutual fund account, it is an online process and it's a 100% online process. With CKYC coming into play, there's hardly anything which needs to be done. The SIPs, that is small investments every month or in a, at, a, at a periodical interval, it shows you, gives you an assurance of power of compounding. I will talk about it a little more, little later. It manages inflation very well. We have already seen you getting close to 16% for last 45 years. The mutual fund investment does provide you tax benefits, maybe not as per what you expect, but it is uh, there's a fairly reasonable uh, amount of tax benefit. If it is planned properly, it can in fact be better. It's safe, though it is subject to market risk. Mutual fund investments are subject to market. But then there's been a lot of uh, regulatory strictness uh, on this sector and it's quite safe and it's very transparent. Now, ways of investing in mutual fund, we all know whether we can go for lump sum investment or systematic investment plan. The lump sum investment is basically what we call it systematic withdrawal plan. When somebody has got a huge corpus, especially the retiring or the, <clears throat> the retired people, you, you know, get a lot of uh, money, a lot of funds can actually put it in one lump sum and then go for the systematic withdrawal plan. That is where the income generation comes. I will just tell you about how does that happen. I We call it as a regular income plan or a systematic withdrawal plan. Basically, I mean, I'm sure we all know about it. It's a facility in mutual fund where you invest a lump sum amount and uh, start getting a fixed monthly income. That means the you know, number of mutual fund unit, depending on how much money you want, gets automatically redeemed or sold on a preset date. You decide, okay, I want money on first of every month, like my I'm getting my salary, or 31st or 30th of every month, like I'm getting a salary. So uh, two days before redemption will happen, and on the set date, the amount gets credited to your bank account. No. No, no problems anywhere, no paperwork required. Once you set a target date and every time it comes on the same appointed date. So this is how the systematic withdrawal plan works. 
supposing somebody has a requirement of monthly requirement of 1 lakh 25000 rupees so you may be wondering why 1 lakh 25000 rupees we at armed forces officer this is the uh, average loss of salary you have when you uh, retire that is uh, you know when you take it a 50% i have rounded up to 1 lakh 25000 rupees and uh, one 0.4 CR is the average uh, you know, uh, corpus amount which somebody gets it when he, when he is retiring from the armed forces. I've uh, taken an annual return of 14%, though I will tell you why it can be more, but I have taken an average return because the data says it is between 14 to 16% anytime, anywhere. So this is how it looks at that if you withdraw 125,000 rupees per month at the end of five years, uh, somebody uh, who's invested this 1.4 CR would have already withdrawn 75 lakhs from the uh, corpus and the corpus would have gone, grown to around 1.64 crore. At the end of 10 years, he would have withdrawn 1 crore 50 lakhs and the corpus value available would have been around, will be around 2.1 CR. At the end of 15 years, it will be 225 and 3 crore. And at the end of 25 years, it will be 375 and 8 crores or so, around 5 times. Why I have calculated it in 25 years? Because I have taken the retirement age as 60 years and an average life expectancy to be around 85 years. So at the age, if somebody was retiring at uh, 60, at the age of 85, he would still be having 8 crore with him at having withdrawn 3.75 crore so this is what is we call or we understand as power of compounding because whatever investments you have it is actually rotating and churning so this entire thing is available to you imagine 1.4 cr getting converted into 8.05 cr and you withdrawing 1 lakh 25000 rupees every month for the next 25 years Where's the loss? Nowhere. That's why I say mutual fund sahi hai. But then uh, the previous calculation was with 14%. And I had shown you from 1979 to 2024 journey of Sensex, wherein it is close to 16%. So why it is 16%? People generally do not uh, you know, put a figure of uh, anything uh, like this on mutual fund investment. In fact, SEBI also guides uh, to be quoted around 12, 12 and a half percent. But why I am I have that conviction is basically there are two factors which I do a calculation. How does the info mutual fund returns get calculated? It is the mutual fund, uh, it is the inflation plus the growth in GDP. So if that average inflation is between 6 to 7 percent, and average GDP growth is around 7 to 8%. As for me, the average mutual fund return has to be 14 to 16%. Because 6% is the inflation. So you, uh, nobody is doing anything. The valuation is automatically happening. Another 7% is growth of GDP. If the industry is working, so naturally the circulation is happening. I mean, how the GDP is you know, calculated is by way of how the, the industry is working. So with this, I arrive at a figure of around 14 to 16%. And I find most of the time my predictions have been correct. Before moving further, let's have a look at uh, the factors which actually influence the income level. And uh, because all these figures, though, I mean, theoretically good, mathematically correct, but still uh, you may wonder, you know, he's saying, but no, my mutual fund has given me only 10%. Or my so-and-so investment is only giving me negative returns. I bought it for so, so much amount and now it is available only for this much. So what happens, why such things happen is, one is an individual's expertise and knowledge about a particular sector or a particular investment product which he is uh, getting into. Second is uh, the location, especially or more so important about physical assets. Something at whatever rate will grow in Gurgaon may certainly not uh, grow at the same rate in, uh, say, uh, you know, some obscure town somewhere. Okay. So that is very important. 
then the duration uh, the duration for which somebody is willing to hold uh, the investment okay i always say the timing of entry is not very important but the time of holding is very important if you uh, can if somebody can hold because then averaging happens okay if something has been growing at a rapid pace to some extent and you think that the the last guy who bought it a year back and he had around 70% profit so when i buy it now maybe i'll also have 70% it may not happen but then if you buy the right, right asset you would have at least i mean what i'm saying is that 16% which is a very handsome return over a period of 45 years if you actually calculate it's a fantastic return the risk appetite also matters okay somebody would want to go for the safety the priority is safety so naturally the returns come down the debt instruments have the lowest rate of return because they are the safest your fd i call it as a debt instrument okay you it is finally going for the servicing of a debt okay then uh, the involvement when i say involvement involvement of anybody who is managing the investment you may be doing it yourself you you may have uh, somebody who is working on behalf of you you may have somebody who is advising you guiding you how much is that person involved with that investment will actually influence the uh, the outcome or the return from that investment the rate of return naturally in fact it should be rate of inflation if the inflation is high the rate of return will go down if the inflation is low the rate of return will automatically be up. Geopolitical situations uh, do affect the investments in for, uh, investments income. It could be, I mean, there may be something like, you know, me investing in Delhi somewhere and there's a war happening between you know, the Hamas and uh, Israel. It may not uh, affect my investment here. But then uh, if something is happening in India, it will have uh, an impact. So you know it has to be correlated okay if there's something happening and i am in the you know the share market the money is getting pulled out naturally it will have an effect whether you if we all remember there was a global crisis in 2008 it did have an effect on return of investment for that short period okay and finally compounding this is one of the factor which influences the income level Whatever be the, the the average return on a regular basis, if you are able to keep it for long, let me be let me again assure you, this when the magic plays, you have already seen how how it turns out to be. Very important factor while we consider about investments is also about risk management. Okay, since we do not we think you know insurance is uh, not for me or uh, you know like we forgies we already have our group insurance etc so we think that you know there's no requirement of going for a risk management insurance insurance is not only the life it is also health it is also for loans which we have taken so that risk management is very important uh, when we plan for our uh, you know, retirement and there are uh, three significant risks which i always say one is longevity risk is also a concern okay you know we talk about death the insurance for death but then there may be a requirement for you to have an assured income for a longer period of time okay so the insurance sector is one which gives you that kind of assurance the liability insurance i've already told that is a risk you know supposing somebody departs and leaves a lot of liabilities for the family so whatever investments wherever they have done all goes into you know paying off those debt or those loans so nothing is left so that insurance is also very important that insurance i don't say you insure the loan you need to cater for insurance to handle that loan okay and thirdly is estate planning is what i advocate uh, not many insurance uh, consultants agree to this but yes i have a thought process so i always say that yes you, you want to plan it your you know, legacy so insurance is one way of doing it more on this would be you know coming up a little later as to which all you know various insurance products can be incorporated and for your for designing your broader goals of financial securities and preserving wealth 
so with this i must tell you uh, some uh, you know small tips to manage portfolio post retirement uh, i'm sure we all must be keen to listen to that not going into uh, the greater details but uh, remember three basic thing thumb rule which we say and uh, i think it was told by warren buffett also yes here it is there were two rules which he said one is never lose money and second was never forget rule number 1 okay so the focus is on protection and of course when you are doing an investment what what are you doing it for income gener generation and corpus growth so remember three thumb rules corp income generation corpus protection and corpus growth if you have these thumb rules why basic safeguards what all you should do whenever you are doing investments at your own you need to pay attention to the valuation there's something called as value investing okay there's a there's a very big uh, topic i'll not be touch, uh, you know talking about that here but then one needs to understand what valuations are there there are certain you know certain uh, assets which have which skyrocket and then everybody is you know wanting to jump on to that bandwagon you know me too but then end of the day when you you know when you buy that asset you realize you were the last one to buy it okay whenever somebody goes for an investment one needs to calculate the real return we talked about inflation adjusted return that is very important don't go for absolute return people do you know think of uh, when i'm approaching uh, somebody for investment i may talk about absolute return was 5 uh, years back it was 100 rupees today it is 500 rupees okay five times but you know that is that's all okay but then what is the cagr what is the irr is there any expenses involved okay what is the annual rate of return okay what is the underlying assets do you know it may happen it may happen that some asset has just skyrocketed grown but what is the value available with with that investment so all that has to be answered all that has to be understand don't blindly follow trends is what i say i mean no opportunity is the last opportunity it's don't don't ever think that you not bought this so you missed the bus okay maybe there's something better which is yet to come okay an investment we always say that it is never an end it is only when you start okay so don't ever follow it blindly just because you know so many people you remember i don't know how many of my age groups are there there were people who were buying some forests you know, all of a sudden everybody was you know rubber planter rubber tree forester planter and farmer people knew how to calculate cubic feet cubic meters and sizes etc they are they and as i said don't keep all your eggs into one basket diversifying risk is very important one needs to do these are the basic safeguards if one follows nothing will go wrong with investments okay you can continue with this advice you can continue investing by yourself what you do is set a goal i mean just a recap research when you researching you may pick up your phone talk to family some friend somewhere or follow some magazines newspapers tv whatever choose your fund or investment wherever you want to invest do that investment then you have to track the performance and you will now wonder whether i have achieved you see investing is i would say easy but exiting or when to exit that answer is difficult to be it, that question is difficult to be answered okay that uh, that lure i had invested 100 rupees today is 150 i must exit okay and when i exit in 150 and when i see it climbing to 500 that's the time i wonder whether i did the right thing or not so if you any time find that situation you have to start start researching again just uh, trying to throw some data uh, there are 44 amcs in india which have got around i mean the last count was around 26 some 35 2635 five or something is the mutual funds the insurance companies are around 57 out of it around 24 life insurance and 33 non life insurance or general insurance and they got as many you know products offer which you need to choose from so yes it can be done i mean uh, everybody is capable not that it is not i am just trying to throw some data this will make it difficult 
to choose what is best. So that is where the previous slide, you know, you have to go through and ask people and do this. And let me tell you, once you get a lot of money in your bank account, you start getting phone calls from the bank staff. They have an access to your bank account and they know how much is the money available. So they are only selling you a product. They are not doing any kind of investment planning for you. Remember it. So just because a bank staff has told you to invest in uh, a particular product, it may not be the right product for meeting your requirements. Okay. Also, there are online platforms. Nowadays, you have online platform. I call it as a financial bazaar. Uh, the, the array of investment stalls to choose from. It's very convenient. Let me tell you, it's accessible 24-7. It does all that. It is, you know, does it everything paperless. No, you don't have to go anywhere, etc., etc. You can, within maybe minutes, you we can be ready to do any investment at your, at your own. But before doing that, just ask these questions. Is it customized to your requirement? Or it's just one of those off-the-shelf market products available for you to invest in? Or does it suit to your unique financial appetite? Or have you not actually worked out what is your unique financial appetite? If you are not, then certainly what comes your way, you will pick it up and invest. But if you've gone through the presentation uh, carefully, you would realize that such products are you know, tailored just like that. And Picking up the right product is what is an, uh, you know, a difficult task. So that is why I advise, while I advise people to invest in mutual fund, I also advise people to have wealth partner. I call it as wealth partner. Somebody says investment advisor, somebody says, you know, financial advisor, whatever. Okay. Uh, the wealth partner can actually create a comprehensive financial plan for you. There are no reckless mistakes and emotional mistakes with the wealth uh, partner because he understands the market and he does not get jittery about when the market is going up or going down. They understand when, when where is the opportunity. Uh, he can ensure diversification and he can actually tailor the investment solutions uh, suiting to each individual's unique requirements. Drafts a customized investment portfolio. Offers advice in unpredictable financial markets. Your financial advisor may give you a call, sir. This is what is coming up in the market today, tomorrow, uh, maybe next one week. Kindly arrange funds. You can actually do good there. Listen to that financial advisor. He is wanting it to happen. Okay. He may like to help uh, rebalance your investment because all investment decisions of everybody may not be correct all the time. Okay, they would be mistakes. And uh, a wealth partner or a financial advisor will also commit mistakes. It is not that, that he is some god and he actually knows and does everything. No. But then for that person to understand the mistake and catch that mistake at the early stage and take corrective action is far more better than anybody doing it individually. You may call him as your financial friend, a guide or a financial storyteller, whatever, but then he is there with you. And uh, remember, the stock market is a manic depressive because it is said again by Warren Buffett. And I think for this very reason, everybody who wants to travel on, to take a journey on share market or investment should have a wealth partner. We all know about Warren Buffett. Everybody knows. But how many of actually know about this guy? He is known uh, Benjamin Graham. He was his guide or an instructor or whatever you may call him for his financial journey. And whatever Warren Buffett, I mean, he does say that. I have read a book wherein he gave the credit to Benjamin Graham that whatever his net worth is about $132 billion as on um, maybe this month. That uh, he gives a credit of all this to whatever Benjamin Graham has told him to do. And he finds that this is what is the best way I've been doing it. Uh, incidentally, 90%, 99% of Buffett's net worth was accumulated after the age of 65 years, though he started investing at the age of 11 years. And I think he became the income tax payee at uh, first side income tax return at the age of 13 or something. But his actual income, whatever we see, 132 billion, 90% or 99% was after he attained the age of 65. It is not that something happened. It is the magic of compounding. 
okay if you actually see it on a plotted graph it's gradually grown and subsequent years or the you know the years after 65 years it actually you know went up like anything so coming to the end uh, i will uh, leave you with a quote of warren buffett again is price is what you pay and value is what you get it is with reference to the value investing which uh, concept which he professes okay and uh, with, i will leave you here uh, thank you very much for your patient listening on yourself on your faith on your dreams on your mind